Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to Peach's Castle, a wonderful place full of beautiful paintings, gorgeous architecture and coins? Ew, that's gross! Everybody knows money is the dirtiest thing ever, which is why I try to avoid the coins all the time when playing my Mario games. And today we're actually trying something new, a full-fledged 3D Mario game. And there's no best way to start off than with the game that revolutionized the gaming industry when it was released, Super Mario 64. The rules are simple. We must avoid any coins that are in our way. Super Mario 64 keeps track of your maximum number of coins in every courses, so we need to keep this lovely number to zero. Now, as you probably know, there are tons of crazy glitches in Super Mario 64, meaning that you could technically beat the game with zero stars, but I always try to keep my challenges glitchless, so that anyone can attempt them. This means that we are going to be collecting the minimum required amount of stars to complete the game the intended way. This minimum is 70 stars. Super Mario 64 features 4 Bowser doors that are activated by collecting a minimum amount of stars. Opening those doors bring you to a Bowser fight, which gives you a key to access new areas and new courses. Every course in Super Mario 64 has 7 stars to collect, but one of those stars is obtained by collecting 100 coins, meaning we won't be able to get that one. Plus, there's always a red coin star in every level in the game, and in Super Mario 64, collecting a red coin means getting two regular coins. So, you know, we're going to have to skip this one too. So this means that we can collect a maximum of five stars in each courses. Obviously, there are some secret levels like Princess Peach Castle Slide, which could get us more stars, and there will obviously probably be stars we can't do. So we'll see if we can get to that beautiful 70 stars mark without collecting a single of those dirty coins. Let's begin, shall we? The lobby in Peach's castle contains 4 coins directly next to the staircase when you enter it. But why would we collect those? We're not dumb. The bomb battlefield is up and it teaches us that it's actually possible to defeat enemies in this Mario game as the coin they give you appears when their death animation is over so we can easily dodge the coin before it touches Mario. Getting up the mountain is quite easy, as there are not a lot of coins there, and defeating King Babam is not difficult at all. The next star is a race against Koopa the Quick, which is literally the same thing we just did, so yeah, this one's a piece of cake. Shoot to the island in the sky requires you to open up the cannon and shoot yourself to the floating island. The only problem I could see is this lonely red coin that you don't want to touch, but it's pretty easy not to aim at it. The fourth star is called Find the 8 Red Coins, and you know, we won't be able to do that one. I tried to see if we could get the Chain Chomp star, but there's a red coin on the platform we need to ground pound, so this is not gonna happen today. The only other star requires you to fly between circles of coins, and I'm not trying that one, no way. Wump's Fortress is next, and there's actually quite a lot of coins in our path to get to the top. I had to make a side jump to avoid those 5 coins here, and then here I couldn't use the wooden plank to cross to the other side, so I had to jump from here. It's actually quite easy. Defeating the Wump King is not difficult, so that's a star. Failing those really precise jumps usually mean you'll fall down and take some damage, and in Super Mario 64, you heal by collecting coins, so sadly, we won't be able to do that in this quest. Climb up the tower once again to get another star. This next one usually requires you to use the cannon to shoot to it, but there's a lot of deadly coins there, so we're actually going to have to find another way to get that star. Thankfully, a wall jump under here just gives you barely enough height to reach the star. The next star is the red coin star, but you know, we can do some other stars beside that one. So let's grab that hole in that tree and drop into the cage containing the... Uh, um, I said, drop into the cage containing the star. There you go. Next up is the star where you use the cannon to break the wall and then you just grab the star, really. The only difficulty here is entering the cannon without collecting that little annoying coin there. But if you jump without grabbing the ledge, you'll be good. Those are all the stars we can get in Womp's Fortress, so let's move on to the peaceful Jolly Roger Bay. 
Swimming down to the sunken ship is actually quite easy and doesn't feature any dangerous coins. The inside of the boat doesn't have any coins at all, so we're good. This next star requires you to taunt the eel so that it leaves its home only to collect the star, and once again, no coins in here. Getting inside the ocean cave requires you to dodge this ring of coin, but as you can see, this is not a challenge at all. Open up the cannon and shoot to this thing here to get another easy star. The only remaining star we can get requires the metal cap, and we'll have to come back later. Let's move on to the next level for now, Cool Cool Mountain. Two stars in Cool Cool Mountain require you to enter the chimney at the beginning of the level to go to the secret slide, but it isn't possible to enter it because of all of those coins. I tried many ways of entering, but sadly, I always collect a minimum of two coins no matter what I do. Let's just bring back the baby penguin to his mother for now, shall we? And there we go, they're both reunited, and we have the star. Wait, what are you doing, Mario? Oh my god, are you for real? Wow. This is so sad. The next star we can get is located under here and the only potential coin you can get are from those two spin drifts over there. So just jump above them and you'll be good to go. To be fair, we can't collect any more stars in here as the other ones are the red coins and the snowball thingy, but the snowball thingy only appears when you select it from the menu and since we can't complete the red coins, we can't choose that one. Now that we have played all of the four courses located near the lobby, let's open the first star door and go to the dark world to fight Bowser. This stage actually features a couple of coins, and those five here can be quite annoying to dodge. You need to do a triple jump followed by a nosedive to dodge them all, as you know crawling next to them actually collects them, even though you don't even physically touch them. Come on Nintendo! There's a lot of coins on those moving platforms, but just stand on the corners and you'll be okay. Grab Bowser by the tail and so long, King Bowser! We now have the key and have access to the basement of the castle. But just before we go there, let's go to the courtyard and enter Big Boo's Hound. The first star here requires you to defeat all of the boos in the mansion, but there's a bit of a problem. Those boos have a blue coin inside of them, so you'll really have to defeat them and quickly dodge the coin they drop. It's a little bit tricky, but easily doable. Fight Big Boo and the star is yours. Next up is a quick visit to the underground to once again defeat boos, avoid their coins and then defeat the Big Boo to collect the star. The only difficulty comes from the fact that the floor is moving, but the coins that the boos drop are not moving, so you'll have to be really careful. The secret of the haunted book is super easy as it contains no coins at all. Get to the top of the mansion, defeat the Big Boo again and another star is yours. The next star is the red coin star, so we're not going to do that one. And the other one requires the vanish cap, so you know, we'll come back to this one later. Let's go down the staircase to the basement, grab that bunny, steal his star, and we can now proceed to Hazy Maze Cave. To be fair, this cave doesn't contain that many annoying coins, because most of them are not on your path. Follow the way, go down in the cave, get on Dory's back, and the star is yours, just in the center of those annoying coins. Grabbing more stars is pretty easy in this cave and doesn't really require any special effort at all. Just follow the path over and over again to get to the many stars in this cave and you'll be able to collect everything but the red coins star. The metal cap challenge only has this one annoying line of coins over there that requires a long jump to dodge it all. And sadly, we cannot get the star in here because we can't collect red coins. Let's jump down the waterfall and on that note, this level is done. Lethal Lava Land is next and although some coins are kind of in the way, you can easily dodge them if you wait for the lava to leave those platforms. Defeating the big bully is quite easy. But after that, defeating the three little bullies is actually a little bit more challenging because of all those coins in the center of the platform. This means you can only fight around those, but once that is done, the star is yours. The log star is pretty easy as it features no coins, so just get in the boat, get on the log, roll it, and there you go. The next two stars require you to go inside the volcano, and this volcano actually contains a couple of annoyingly placed coins. For the elevator star, you'll want to do a double jump followed by a dive to get to the star. 
For the other one, you'll have to jump in between those coins here and there, and then you'll probably want to skip some of those platforms as they contain some of those mean coins. This course is done and we can move to the mandatory desert level that I hate, Shifty Sand Land. The first star requires you to hit Klepto the bird and to do so you'll want to stand on top of this pillar but make sure to get to the very corner of it because there's a coin that is dangerously placed on top of it. The star is now yours and if you want another easy one to get just triple jump to the top of the pyramid from the outside and here's another one for you. Getting inside the pyramid reveals a much more difficult segment in this quest. You actually need to get up to the top of the pyramid and there's a lot of coins that stand in your way. The great mobility of our boy Mario will be put to the test, but despite how difficult some of those jumps seem to be, they're all possible to do. Eventually, you'll reach the top of the pyramid and grab the star. To get the next star, you first need to stand on top of those four pillars to open up the secret entrance to the pyramids. I actually made my quest much more difficult here by doing ground pounds on top of each one because I thought this was the way to go, but apparently just walking on them was enough. Oopsie! Get inside the pyramid, defeat the boss, and this star is yours. The final star requires you to collect some coins in order to uncover the secrets of the pyramid, so I think this one is out of the question, as we don't want those coins. Let's enter the star door and we will reach Dire Dire Ducks. To be real, this level features a couple of coins but they're all placed in a way you can easily dodge them. The only thing that could be considered difficult in here is the fact that you'd usually grab some coins to replenish your health because you lose health by holding your breath underwater, but just swim back up and you'll always be okay. One of the stars in here requires the Vanish Cap, so I think now is the perfect time to actually go grab it. The Vanish Cap level doesn't feature annoying coins, so you'll be all good to go. Let's use that newly discovered power up to grab the final star in this level. And while we're at it, we can actually go back to Big Boo's Hunt and use this new power to get the final star we can get in there. With 40 stars in hand, it's time to go see our boy Bowser, who's hiding in Lava Land. Going up to meet Bowser is actually easier than the first time because most of the coins in here can be dodged by just going around them. The only difficult part I could see is this part over there, but as you can see there's a way around. Going up this last part will require you to walk on this little wall here to dodge the coins, but that's all there is really. It's Bowser time, and a quick throw is all that is needed and this bad boy is gone once again. Before going up to the second floor, let's do the princess secret slide, shall we? This slide is quite annoying as it features tons of coins. You have to memorize where those deadly coins are located, but after a couple dozen of tries, you'll reach the star. But sadly, as you know, there's another star we can get in here which requires us to beat the slide in less than 21 seconds. It's usually not really difficult at all, but now that we have to slow down to avoid coins, it becomes much more difficult. After a lot of tries, I eventually managed to get the impressive time of 20.6 seconds. Woohoo! Let's open up this door and move up to the second floor of the castle. Snowman Land is next, and the first star is actually located on top of the big snowman. There's a couple of annoying coins that force you to do some double jumps to dodge them, and the hardest one is definitely the coin located after the ice bridge. The difficulty here is that if you stand on the corner of the wooden platform, you'll still get blown away by the big snowman. I decided to dive and skip all of those coins, and I got the star that way. Fighting the bully is pretty straightforward. Same thing with the ice maze, which doesn't have any coins in there. Bounce on the spindrift and you'll reach the next star without collecting a single coin. The last star we can get is inside the igloo, but it's protected by deadly coins, so you'll have to go around the mountain and triple jump above that wall to reach it. Once inside, the star is yours. This level is complete and we can move to Wet Dry World, my least favorite course in the entire game. 
To be real, all of the coins in here are super easy to dodge, so you rack up the stars in no time. There's one on top, one inside that cage, one in that box, one in the city, and there's one star that requires you to find secrets, but I hate that star so much I actually forgot about it. No joke, I just skipped it without even realizing. Taltal Mountain is next and get ready to climb up the mountain using the long path, as the shortcut is full of deadly red coins we'll need to avoid. Those 5 coins on this narrow bridge require a long jump to dodge them all. Same thing over here. Do it and the star is yours. Knowing those 3 dangerous spots with coins, just be careful and you'll rack up lots of stars. The most difficult one here is hidden in the secret slide, where you'll have to dodge bouncing purple coins ready to touch you at any point. The other difficult part is over there where you need to take the right path, but it's full of evil coins. Eventually, you'll reach the end, grab the star and this world is now done. Tiny Huge Island's first star requires you to kill giant piranha plants, which isn't very difficult. Just make sure to dodge the coins they drop and this star is done. The second star requires a double nosedive jump to avoid those pesky coins on this wooden bridge there. The race against Koopa the Quick doesn't feature a lot of coins on your way, so you'll beat him easily. Getting on top of the mountain as Giant Mario is quite tedious, as I didn't manage to triple jump there, and the bridge with coins is impossible to cross in that state. I eventually did it by doing a triple jump from this point here. Yeah, that was weird. Find the secrets, grab the star, drain the water, defeat Wiggler, and you got everything that this world has to offer. We've done every courses the second floor has for us, so we'll go to the top floor, but just before we do this, let's talk to the toad to get some easy stars and let's catch the rabbit a second time for a second star. We are now on the top floor, meaning we have two courses left to collect six more stars to make this quest a success. TikTok clock is next and it's actually a pretty nice clock that doesn't have any coins that will bug you. If you're being careful, all of the coins are super easy to dodge. Getting all 5 stars will prove to be quite easy, meaning that we now have 69 stars and only require one more to get to Bowser 3. Let's visit Rainbow Ride, probably one of the hardest levels in any Mario game ever, because in here, if you fall down, you're gone. Most of the coins in here are super easy to dodge because of how wide the platforms are everywhere. And there we go, let's celebrate with a little dance as we get our 70th star. We can now go to Bowser 3 and hopefully finish this quest, but let's just see if we can gather more stars in here before. Relax on the flying carpet and you'll reach the top which features another star. Take the other carpet and you'll reach the boat and a star. These pyramid shaped platforms will lead you to another one and finally blast from the cannon to the final star. We now have 74 stars, wow, and I'm sure we missed others that we couldn't get earlier in the game. If we can finish Bowser 3, the quest will be over, let's go. Just like Bowser 1 and Bowser 2, this level does contain a couple of coins but they're all easy to avoid if you're being careful. The final Bowser fight is upon us, and don't ask me how, but I defeated him in like 30 seconds. I actually managed to get all my throws on the first try. This never happened to me before. The final star is upon us, and now the quest is over. We did it! We have completed Super Mario 64 without collecting a single coin. It is possible to do it! And that is without any glitches or anything really, playing it the legit way. If I have to be honest here, this quest was actually the easiest one I've attempted so far, as most coins are super easy to dodge and I don't think there's a difficult part at all in here. So if you want to attempt your first coinless Mario game, I'd suggest starting with this one to get used to the idea of dodging those pesky coins. You know what? I have come to a realization. I have been treating Mario poorly, forcing him to dodge all of the shiny yellow coins during his adventures. I feel like my boy Mario needs a vacation, and today 
I'll actually be nice with him. So I got him, Peach and Grandpa Toad a ticket to Delfino Plaza, the best vacation island resort in the whole Mushroom Kingdom. Psych! This is yet another challenge video, my dude! Gotcha! In other words, today we'll attempt to beat Super Mario Sunshine without touching a single coin. The rules are simple. We are going to try to beat Super Mario Sunshine for the Nintendo GameCube without touching any of those yucky yellow coins. You see this lovely coin counter at the top over there? Well, we need to keep it at zero for the entire game. Super Mario Sunshine also has another coin counter that's always showing up over there, the blue coins. These can be exchanged for Shine Sprites in a normal playthrough. But since those coins can show up over there, I'm going to avoid touching the blue coins as well. Well, to beat Super Mario Sunshine, you need to complete episode 7 of every single world. So unlike Super Mario 64, we won't be able to skip any level that are too difficult. This will definitely be interesting and make the challenge more difficult. So without further ado, let's just jump into it. So while Mario was having dreams of actually collecting coins, the plane had to make an abrupt stop because of all the weird paint on the landing strip. Just move your way across this area and grab this little robot called Flood. With Flood equipped, you can now spray water and clean up the entire island. The game even gives you some paint to spray as a tutorial. And, well, ugh, watch out for the coins that appear after you clean that paint. That Pianta dude over there doesn't believe his eyes. I know dude, coins in the tutorial? That's plain evil. Spray this thing, kill the plant, and you'll get your very first Shine Sprite. Sadly, you'll also get arrested by the police for no reason, and will be forced to clean the entire island because these dudes think that is you. Although it absolutely looks nothing like you. Oh well. Time to make our way to Bianco Hills, the first level of the game, and start collecting some Shine Sprites. Bianco 1 wants you to take this path to get to your destination, and there are lots of coins on the way, so you're going to have to move around the evil coins. But thankfully, there's a lot of grass to stand on, and reaching the paint plant without touching a single coin is pretty simple. Bianco 2 wants you to go back to the exact same path, except this time around, most of the coins that were in the way have been removed, making this one even easier. Get on top of the windmill and you'll get to fight Petey Piranha. Thankfully for us, there is not a single coin in the battle arena, so this level will be done in no time. Bianco 3 will ask you to get to a secret cave and once again, there are no coins on the way to the cave, so entering it will be a cakewalk. Welcome to your first secret challenge, levels taking place in an alternate universe where you cannot actually use Flood and are forced to do some classic Mario platforming. Looks like I'm not really good because I kept dying over and over again, but I can assure you that coins have nothing to do with it, as there's none of them in the cave. Bianco 4 is up, and it's named Red Coins of the Windmill Village. Ugh. Now this scared me a lot, because in Super Mario 64, red coins used to increase your total coin counter, forcing us to skip those levels when we did the Without a Coin Challenge. And sadly, as I mentioned, you cannot really skip episodes in Mario Sunshine, because you need to beat the first 7 ones in every single level to beat it. So I went ahead slowly, and did touch the red coin. And oh my gosh, it has its own temporary coin counter down there, meaning it will not actually increase the total yellow or blue coin counter. Oof, we are saved. The quest can continue, yes. Collect all of the red coins and you'll beat this level quite easily. Bianco 5 is a rematch against Petey Piranha, but you'll be fighting it in the village this time around. Be careful when spraying the paint on the floor, as there are evil coins hidden in it and they pop out after you wash the paint down. Always spray from afar to be safe. Bianco 6 is another level featuring a secret cave where you cannot use Flood to help you out. Just like the previous secret cave level, there is not a single coin in it, so just make your way to the end and you'll be good to go. We have now reached episode 7 of Bianco Hills, and episode 7s in Super Mario Sunshine are always about you chasing down Shadow Mario, having to spray water on him until he collapses and gives you the Shine Sprite. 
This is pretty easy and there are no evil coins on the way. With Shadow Mario gone and the Shine Sprite hours, Bianco Hills is now complete! Let's kill another one of those gooey plants and explore the next world, Rico Harbor. The first episode features lots of coins on the way to the blooper dude we need to defeat. Plus, you're often hanging on ceilings or fences, so avoiding those coins becomes quite confusing, but it is possible. Once we reach Bloopy the Blooper, we'll have to avoid the coins located around it while we fight. It's not gonna be a tough fight though. Rico 2 wants you to hop on one of those bloopers and follow the coins to the secret cave. Obviously we'll have to maneuver around the coins, but it is possible to enter the cave anyways. Once you're inside of it, there are no more coins standing in between you and the Shine Sprite, so just have some fun with the blooper. Rico 3 does contain a few coins here and there as you make your way inside the big yellow cage, but they're all pretty easy to dodge. Speaking of easy things, Rico 4 doesn't have a single coin leading to the goal, and once you're inside of the secret level without flood on your back, well, there's no coins either, so this one's a free B. Rico 5 is a simple rematch against the blooper, except this time around there are no coins on your way. Yeah. It's easier. <laughs> Anyways, we had our share of easy shine sprites, but get ready, because Rico 6 is not going to be that nice to us. In this one, we have a time limit of 2 minutes to collect 8 red coins located on the water. To do so, we have to hop on one of those super fast moving bloopers from before. The problem is that most of those lovely red coins are surrounded by evil yellow coins, so if we end up collecting one of those by accident, we're toasted. Oh, and if we bump into anything, I mean even the slightest little tiny baby bump, we automatically lose a life. That shine sprite was quite difficult to obtain and took me many tries, but eventually I managed to get all of the red coins and dodge all of those pesky yellow ones. Time for Rico 7, and chasing Shadow Mario is quite easy and will be done without a coin. With Rico Harbor complete, we can now make our way over there and open up Gelato Beach. Mmm, gelato. Tasty. Gelato 1 starts off with a very easy stage where you just spray water on this sprout over there to reach a secret area. Thankfully, there are no coins on the beach and no coins in the secret area, so we're good to go. Gelato 2 wants you to spray those dudes with water and then do a ground pound to fly them out of here. There's absolutely no coins on the mirrors where you fight those dudes, but be extra careful because you get teleported once you clear a mirror of enemies, and one of those mirrors actually teleports you over there once the cutscene is over. And as you can see, that's quite a lot of coins around us. Carefully move out of there and you'll be good. Gelato 3 is a boss battle against a big angry green wiggler, but there's no coins on the way, so you're good to go. Gelato 4 is home to the infamous sand bird. Ugh. Everybody that played Super Mario Sunshine once in their lives has bad memories of this stage. You have to collect 8 red coins to get the shine sprite to appear, and you have to find a way to stay on the bird without falling down. And well now, we also have to dodge those evil yellow coins as well. This level was a real challenge and I actually fell down a lot, especially when trying to get the red coin on the sand bird's tail. I mean, look at that! Avoiding all of those yellow coins and only touching the red coin to then going back on the sand bird was quite the task. Thankfully, it is difficult but possible to do it. Just prepare to die a lot though. Gelato 5 introduces Il Piantissimo, who acts as this game's Koopa the Quick. Basically, just make a run to the flagpole and win the race for an easy shine sprite. There are no coins on the way too, so we're good. Gelato 6 wants you to collect a bunch of red coins in those reefs over there, and thankfully, you'll only find red coins, so for this quest, it is pretty easy. Guess what, we're now at Gelato Beach 7, and all we need to do is to catch Shadow Mario for an easy shine, and on that note, Gelato Beach is a thing of the past. It's finally time for us to go to that weird looking submarine boat thingy and explore Peanut Park. 
As we make our way inside of the theme park, we finally get a good look at Shadow Mario. And it turns out it's actually just Bowser Jr. Oh my gosh, what a shock. He says he captured Princess Peach because she's her mama. This is pretty weird, but let's not let that distract us from the fact that we need to defeat this big evil robot using rockets while riding a roller coaster. Thankfully, there's zero coins in this one. Pina 2 forces you to use those bombs to attack this bunker and force the Monty Mole out of it. Watch out while throwing the bombs as they sometimes miss the target and explode into deadly coins that come back right at you. Once you defeat the mole, explore the secret area and you'll get the shine sprite. Pina 3 wants you to collect 8 red coins located in the many attractions of this park. This is especially scary when the red coins are surrounded by evil yellow coins like over there. Ugh, just be extra careful and with a bit of practice, skill and luck, you'll clear this one without a coin. Pina 4 is home to those Yoshi egg looking turtles. The plan is to ground pound all of them to save the sunflower and get the shine sprite. If there's one tip I can give you out for this one, it would be to quickly move away from the turtle after doing your ground pound. Because during a cutscene, tons of evil coins appear and if you're not far enough from the turtle, you'll definitely end up collecting a few. Pina 5 is a pretty annoying level, not because of coins, but mostly because of horrible camera controls. I mean, how am I supposed to climb up the tower with such a bad camera? Oh, and can we talk about this? What the heck just happened? Are you okay, Mario? Are you okay, my dude? Pina 6 is really easy, just get my boy Yoshi some fruits and explore the secret cave, which just like all of the other ones in the quest, doesn't feature a single coin. Let's chase Shadow Mario down and defeat him to get the final shine sprite and clear Pina Park forever. Next up is Noki Bay, and this level is going to be pretty annoying, not gonna lie. Noki 1 forces you to make your way up this mountain that's covered in evil paint, and as you make your way up and spray the paint away, evil coins will appear, so you'll have to be very careful. After making your way to the top, you'll need to grab some bombs and throw them at this bunker. Uh, uh, oh, oh. As I was saying, just throw three bombs, don't fall down, and defeat the dude to recover the shine sprite. In No Key 2, you're normally meant to use Flood on those tiles on the wall to uncover secret tunnels and areas to make your way to the top of the world. Now, obviously this won't be possible, because these tunnels are full of evil yellow coins and there's literally no way to dodge those. Thankfully, Flood will be of great help, as we can just start climbing on those platforms and make our way as high as possible while dodging the pesky yellow coins on the way, and we'll soon reach the top of the world and we'll fight Blue P the Blooper. Yup, he's back again. Don't you ever give up, bruh? Once that is done, the shine is out. In Noki 3, Mario gets shrunk and gets teleported inside of a bottle to recover red coins. Pretty random if you ask me. Anyways, 7 of those red coins are actually quite easy to get, but the final one will be quite a pain in the butt. You see, this final red coin is over there, and when you're trying to grab it, there's an invisible water spray thingy that keeps pushing you up. Normally, I suppose you're meant to grab all of those yellow coins from the bottom and make your way up there to grab the red one afterwards, but we can't do that this time around because yellow coins are yucky. It took me a couple of tries to get the angle just right, but it is actually possible to just grab the red coin while avoiding all of those other yellow ones. It is not really fun and pretty confusing, but it is possible nonetheless. No Key 4 scared me a lot because you're meant to fight this evil fish bus dude that sprays toxic bubbles at you and tries to swallow you whole. To defeat the dude, you have to clean his teeth. <laughs> yep, that's right, you clean his teeth to defeat him. And people still argue that Super Mario Sunshine isn't an educational game. Pfft, cringe. 
The problem is that you normally recover air by touching yellow coins, and we cannot actually do that. I was afraid this level was the end of the quest, up until I sprayed one of those toxic bubbles and realized it explodes into air bubbles that we can breathe to replenish our health. Now this is pretty cool, and with that neat trick, defeating the fish and getting the shine is a piece of delicious cake. Noki 5 is yet another race with Il Piantissimo, and there are zero coins on the way, so this one is easy. The same thing can be said about Noki 6, where you just make your way up those platforms to the secret area and there are no coins on your path. Finally, chase down Shadow Mario once again to get his shine sprite and clear Noki Bay for good. Serena Beach is our next stop, and the very first episode is quite the challenge. There's electric paint everywhere, and we have to clean it up using Flood. Here's the problem though, there's tons of evil coins hiding in the paint, so you'll have to be very careful while cleaning up the beach. I suggest cleaning up as much as you can before talking to this dude and summoning the Manta bus, because spraying all of those little Manta rays while avoiding coins can be quite a challenge. Just be careful, take your time, and you'll be good. Serena 2 is super easy, as you literally just have to enter the hotel and then to spray water on those pink boos to create a staircase and get to the secret cave. And thankfully, there are no coins anywhere on your way. <laughs> Sirena 3 is a really annoying level, because it's actually quite unclear what we need to do. We have to explore the secret parts of the hotel by discovering hidden areas, but I mean, that's kind of random. Once you figure out what to do though, this level is not that difficult. Once you manage to get Yoshi and go back up in the vents, make sure to eat those ghosts and move away before you touch the evil coins that they give out when defeated. Beside that little inconvenience, this level is not that difficult. Serena 4 takes place in the hotel's casino, and if there's anything I know about casinos, is that there might be coins involved. Watch out when spinning those slot machines, as they tend to give out evil coins. Spin some lucky 7s, and then you'll beat this stage easily. Serena 5 is up, and it's a simple fight against King Boo in the casino's basement. Thankfully, there is not a single coin on the way, or not a single coin during the fight, so this one is quite easy. Serena 6 forces you to clean up the island once again, but you have a limited amount of time to do so. Thankfully, all of the evil coins that were hidden in the paint in episode 1 are now gone, so this level will be done in no time. Serena 7 forces you to chase down Shadow Mario in the hotel, and this will be quite easy to do. Goodbye, Serena Beach! Next up is Pianta Village, and the very first Shine Sprite we'll get will be easily obtained. Basically, all we need to do is to grab the Chain Chumps and throw them in the pool to cool them off. To be honest, I always was a cat person, so these Chain Chumps are not my best friends. Pianta 2 is another race with Il Piantissimo, and just like all of those levels, there are no coins on the way, so this will be done easily. Pianta 3 is such an interesting level. You don't have flood in this one, and the village is actually covered with lava paint, so you'll need to go underneath the stage on those fences to then reach this area. Once you're there, make a very precise jump on that mushroom, and then do an epic YOLO jump over there to recover flood. Once that is done, well basically you can just spray water everywhere, so just spray this dude to save him and the shine will be yours. Pianta 4 is up, and you need to give another chain chump a good old bath. Once again, there's not gonna be any coins on the way, so this one is easy. Pianta 5 wants you to get Yoshi and to explore the underside of the village. Getting Yoshi is pretty easy, but I do admit that jumping on those mushroom platforms is a little bit scary. There are tons of coins on them, so you'll have to be very careful where you walk. Thankfully, you'll soon reach this platform, spray the lava wall, and enter the secret area. We're not done yet though, because this secret area is a pain in the butt. You have to talk to these, I'm a chuckster, guys, that will throw you to other platforms. If that isn't difficult enough, there's now also coins that you need to avoid, so you'll actually want them to throw you at a very precise angle that prevents you from collecting coins. It's really annoying, really scary, but if you're lucky, it's possible as well. 
Pianta 6 will ask you to clean those villagers stuck in the lava paint and there won't be a single coin on your way, so meh. This means Pianta 7 is up and once again it is a simple chase scene against Shadow Mario. Spray him with water, the shine will be yours and Pianta Village will be complete! Oh. Oh, looks like Shadow Mario has flooded Delfino Plaza, which means it's now time to chase him inside of this big scary volcano with a scary name that I can't say out loud anymore, or else YouTube will demonetize this video. Oopsie, anyways. For the sake of this video, we'll call it Potato Mountain. Well, we're in luck, because Potato Mountain doesn't contain any annoying coins on the way. There are none on those platforms and the boat part allows you to easily dodge any blue coins on the way. All that is left is to make our way up these clouds and defeat Bowser in his bath. There are zero coins during the fight, so just grab the rocket nozzle, ground pound those things and you will beat the game. And there we go, Bowser is defeated, Delfino Isle is safe and so is Princess Peach and Flood is dead. Now I'm kidding, Flood is not dead, okay? Toads repaired it. So, is it possible to beat Super Mario Sunshine without touching a single coin? Well, yes, yes it is! We even managed to beat it without touching a single blue coin, so that's pretty cool. If you actually watch out where you use floods, water spring mechanics, and if you just move around the coins, well this quest is not very difficult. Super Mario Galaxy is one of my favorite games of all time, and I play it at least once every year. That's how good I think it is. But for this year's playthrough, I decided to try something different. Can I beat it without touching a single coin? The rules are simple. We are going to be playing the original Super Mario Galaxy game for the Wii and attempt to get to the final Bowser fight and defeat him, and all of this without touching one of those dirty yellow coins. You see this lovely coin counter down there? Well, we want this thing to remain at zero. Every time you enter a stage, you can see your coin high score down there, and this will be used at the end to see if we got zero coins everywhere. To get to the final Bowser fight, you need to get 60 stars, so this will be the amount we want to get. Now that everything has been set, let's just jump into it. The game starts off with this beautiful intro level where Mario happily runs heading toward Peach's castle, and even though Bowser ends up breaking everything with his flying airships, there are no coins in here, so we don't have to worry about it. Now that Princess Peach has been finally captured again, and Mario's been owned by this lovely Magikoopa, it's time to catch bunnies in the gateway. To complete this part, you'll need to catch all of the three golden bunnies, and the first one is really easy to get, but to get the second one to appear, you have to jump in this crater, which coincidentally contains one single coin. The trick here is to jump in the crater from the very side of it, so that when you get teleported back out, the coin won't be collected. Besides that, avoid the few coins here and there, and you'll get to meet the lovely Rosalina and her Luma friend, which will give you your very first ability, the Spin Attack. Enter the Lounge Star to reach the very first level of the game, and to be fair, it doesn't have that many coins. Just make sure to break the crystals with the Star Shards, and not those ones with coins inside of them, and you'll be all good. Push all of those yellow switches to get your very first grand star, and this will unlock the terrace and the first couple of planets. Let's go get some stars, shall we? First up is the Good Egg Galaxy, and the first star in here doesn't contain that many coins along the way. Although you'll meet this prankster Luma who will tell you the most useless tip ever in any video games I've played in my entire life. Come on bro, what is that garbage tip collecting coins? Before breaking the egg and fighting Dino Piranha, I suggest you break all of the coin crystals so that the coins disappear, so this will be helpful to avoid picking them up by accident while fighting the boss. Getting the second star in here will not be very difficult, although this level does feature a 2D segment containing a couple of coins, but if you're being careful and you're paying attention to the arrows on the wall telling you which way the gravity shifts, this won't be a problem. This next star is also very easy to get. 
get on top of the house with a couple of wall jumps and spin jumps to avoid most of the level and then play the level normally until you reach King Caliente which just requires you to spin to send back the projectiles he spits at you, yeah, easy star. Next up is the Honey Hive Galaxy, Land of the Bees, and Bee Mario. There's going to be lots of coins on those floating flowers, but thankfully we can just skip them by walking underneath. Be careful when climbing the honeycomb wall as there are a few evil coins here and there. Collect the star shards on the Honey Queen and that's it. The next star in this galaxy is also pretty easy to collect, having very few dangerous coins on your path. Just make sure to aim for the sides when falling down this hole there, as it does contain one evil coin, very reminiscent of the coin in the crater from before. The final star we'll get in here is a boss battle against this green beetle. But besides this lonely coin on the honeycomb there, there's nothing that stands in your way. Flip switch galaxy is next, and all you need to do in here is to step foot on every platform to turn it yellow. There's a grand total of two coins in this galaxy, and both of them are fairly easy to dodge, so just be careful, go around them, and that's it. Next up, loop the loop galaxy. Most of the coins in here are located on the tutorial part of the level, but if you stick to the very right, you'll be able to dodge them all. During the actual course, there's going to be coins here and there, on the left or on the right, but you can just thankfully slow down a bit and move around them and that's it. Welcome to Bowser Jr's Robot Reactor, a level which doesn't contain any coins, so you'll be beating this one in a couple of minutes top. With the second Grand Star in hand, we'll unlock the Fountain and plenty more galaxies to explore. But just before we get there, let's feed this hungry Luma and visit the Sweet Sweet Galaxy, a delicious looking world filled with candies. There's a couple of coins that stand in your way on those moving platforms throughout the stage, but if you take your time and use your spin jumps, you'll make it to the end without touching a single coin. Space Junk Galaxy is up, and this level introduces the Pool Stars, those blue things that you have to point your cursor at to guide Mario. As you can see, there's a couple of coins in our way, but we can just use the momentum from the Pool Star to fly far enough to dodge them. This second section is actually a little bit more difficult, as your Pull Star options are far more limited, but you can dodge most of them up until this part here. It seems like a dead end at first, but after a couple of tries, I managed to find a way to make it pass. Just use those pull stars to get a lot of speed and aim for that one all the way over there on the back and you'll clear all of those ugly coins. Nice. This next section with the platforms that appear as you walk on them doesn't have a single coin, so the star is yours. The second star in this galaxy is quite the easy one, as all you need to do is to use the Koopa Shell to defeat Camilla. For the third star, you'll get to use the Sling Pods to throw Mario around, and do not be too afraid of the coins in your way, as you can basically sling Mario pretty much anywhere that's close to where you'd usually land, and the gravity will pull you back. The fight against Tarantox is very annoying. You see, those stone slabs contain one coin each, and there are some coins on the spider web all around the stage. So when you use the sling pods to attack the bus, the chances of you touching one or more coins are super high. What I recommend doing is breaking all of the stone slabs and then using your Wii pointer to get rid of the coins stuck on the spider web before the actual fight, because then you'll be able to only focus on beating the bus and won't have to worry about anything happening mid-fight. This next star is a Prankster Comet, and it's a speedy one, so that gives us 4 minutes to complete the level from before, except this time there's a lot more coins in the path. Thankfully, the pull star trick from before is still working here and will guide you to the final part, which now features a whole lot of coins, making this a little bit more difficult. Use long jumps, spin jumps and backflips to get the 5 silver stars once again, and that's it. The final star we'll get in this galaxy is this one where you have to jump on Goombas on a planet shaped like a Yoshi head. 
Rolling Green Galaxy is up and this one wants us to jump on the rolling ball and guide it using the lovely motion controls. Sadly, you'll soon reach this part where you usually have to go down the hole, but there's a couple of coins in the way. I did try to jump from around the platform to try to reach the metal rails underneath it, but I never managed to do it. It might be possible, who knows, let's just skip it. Enter Battle Rock Galaxy, a galaxy full of those platforms you can walk under, including this moving one which forces you to dodge incoming cannonballs. There's a couple of coins here and there, but this will be easily completed. The second star in here gives you the bombs that you can use to blow up things. Let's use them to blow up the trash on this planet for an easy star. The next star wants us to use the bomb to free this little Luma buddy, and then he transforms into a launch star for us to use and uh, oh that was a trap bad luma to be honest i tried to swing the wii remote and avoid those three coins up above many times but i guess this is a pixel perfect trick or it's just plain not possible because no matter what i did i always collect the stars even if i shake at the perfect timing or just shake the wii remote like a mad lad nothing works so we'll just have to move on to another star. Hurry Scurry Galaxy is where we'll next go, and this one has a grand total of zero coins. Bowser's Star Reactor is up, and there's a couple of annoying coins located right at the beginning that you have to dodge. I had trouble making Mario walk in a straight line on this curved path, so my strategy was to crouch walk around them. Once that is done, this 2D section also contains a couple of bad coins, but we can avoid all of them by being extra careful in our jumps. Watch out for the coins while fighting Bowser and this next Grand Star will be yours. Bubble Breeze Galaxy is up and this one requires us to blow air at Mario's bubble to guide him in this maze. The first part of the level does contain coins, but you can usually just go around them so no worries. The second part, however, isn't that nice to us. You see, this pad there is way too tight for us to go through without grabbing those coins with Mario's bubble. And I even tried to triple jump above the whole section, but there's an invisible wall preventing us from doing so. This one's not possible. Let's just go to Beach Ball Galaxy instead, where we have to collect star shards that are located underwater. It's actually surprisingly simple to get them all without touching a single coin. Once you reach this part, you're supposed to hit those switches to create wooden platforms allowing you to go to the top. But this last platform is a problem. You see, you'd usually just wall jump to the top, but it's full of gross coins, so we can't do that now. Thankfully, we can just use a backflip to wall, to spin jump, to reach the top and get the star. The second star in here is really easy. All you need to do is find that penguin and steal his golden shell to get the star. The final star in here just requires you to break this wall using a shell to then go inside the cavern. Break those boxes to get to the other side of the fence, but watch out for the coin inside that single one. Wait for it to disappear and you'll reach this final part, which doesn't contain any dangerous coins. And that's it. Ghostly Galaxy is up and make sure to hug the wall when dodging this big chain chump as you don't want to touch those yucky coins on the side. The only annoying part is over there when you get the Boo Mushroom. You have to go through that narrow hallway without touching those coins and hitting the walls make Mario bounce everywhere. So you really have to be extra careful, but this can be done. Scare Luigi and then get his star. The second one in here requires you to beat this boo in a race, and thankfully there are no coins in here, so you won't have any problem whatsoever. The final star has this one part with the star shards and the sling pods, which looks pretty scary at first, because it looks like you have to use the star over there to collect those two coins and then collect the blue shard over there. But you know, just sling Mario over it all using the sling pod there and you'll get it without any issue. Bowser Jr's airship armada is up and this one doesn't have any dangerous coins, so that's an easy win. We now have access to the bedroom and plenty of new galaxies. So let's start with the Gusty Garden Galaxy, 
one of my favorite galaxy because of its music. This first star will require you to catch a bunny once again. And no worries, as there won't be a single coin that stands between you and the star. For the second star in here, you'll also be pleased to learn that there are not a lot of coins on your way. There's a couple of coins on this metallic planet, but it's very easy to just go around them. For the third and final star in here, there's a little bit more annoying coins, but once again, even though they prevent you from moving anywhere you want, you can still manage to use gravity to your advantage and get to the end of the level and collect the star. Let's move to Freeze Flame Galaxy. And the first star we'll get in here will force us to climb up the mountain using Ice Mario, but thankfully there won't be that many coins on our way. Once you reach the top, it's time to fight the boss, Baron To dodge those two coins on the way, just do a backflip and once you're up there, just keep attacking the enemy so that it never pushes you down and this star will be yours. This second star will take place in the flaming hot part of this galaxy. There's a couple of coins here and there, especially in the boxes that you break with Fire Mario, but they're quite easy to dodge. No, the real challenge comes from this part here. You're supposed to light up the torches to create a wall jumping path up above, but as you can see, the path is filled with filthy coins. I tried to find other ways to go up there besides the wall jumping spot, but this didn't go so well. Eventually, I just decided to try the wall jumps, but from the very edge of the walls. And would you look at that? It's actually possible to do the wall jumps without touching the coins. Whew. After that, there's no more challenge, so it's an easy star. The third star in this galaxy is also super easy to get, as there's a grand total of two coins while ice skating over there. Dusty Dune Galaxy is up, and it does have a couple of coins on the way to the first star, but none that are really annoying. There's this second part of the level that takes place in a 2D section that's a little bit stressful, but you can avoid all of the coins with careful jumps. This final section there does contain coins, but you can slide down the walls without touching any of them, so no worries. The second star forces us to defeat tons of pokies on this round arena, featuring this one single coin in the middle. Defeating the pokies is easy and everything, but sadly the lounge star appears on top of a coin, and and you guessed it, we automatically collect this coin when using it. Yup, this is the end of this galaxy, so let's move to another one. By feeding this hungry Luma, we get access to Big Mouth Galaxy, which is an underwater galaxy where you have to swim to go grab a golden shell and use it on the golden treasure chest. Thankfully, this is a piece of cake, as there are no dangerous coins at all. Time to face off Bowser a second time by going to Bowser's Dark Matter Plant. The beginning of the level forces you to be super careful when going up those platforms, as they're very narrow and there's ugly coins all over them. Once that is done, you'll reach this 2D segment which is very annoying. Basically, gravity shifts in the direction of the arrows on the back wall, so you'll have to constantly move to avoid falling down while dodging those pesky coins on the way. This next section has lots of them, but you can literally just hide down there to avoid them all. This second 2D segment is the problematic one. You see, you constantly have to move sides on that platform or else you fall in this dark matter and lose a life. At first it's not really a problem, up until this part with the annoying coins. They're in the way and I try to avoid them many times, but it's really difficult. And since the gravity shifts if you jump too high or touch another gravity wall, you'll be very limited in your movement options. I ended up dodging them with a very weird gravity shifting wall jump. Don't ask me how, but it worked. This second battle against Bowser is just as easy as the first one and with that in mind, this next grand star is ours and we can now access the engine room. Gold Leaf Galaxy is up, and as you can see, this galaxy is very similar to the Honey Hive Galaxy. Getting the first star won't be much of a challenge, as all you have to do is get those blue shards to then reach this planet where you have to capture this lonely rabbit. Make sure to avoid the coins scatter here and there, and that's pretty much all there is to it. The second star will force you to use the Cataquack enemies to reach high grounds. Just make sure there aren't any coins up above and you'll be all good. The final star in here wants you to use B Mario to reach the top while avoiding those rainy clouds. And as you'll soon realize, there aren't any coins on your way up there, so it's pretty easy. 
Next up is the Sea Slide Galaxy, and the first and second star are pretty much the same thing, forcing you to race a shark and some penguins underwater, and to be fair, the only coins in here are located on those air bubbles, but you can easily just go back to the surface and get a breather, and you'll never drown. To get your final star, you need to get those silver stars scattered all over the place, and while there are some coins here and there, none will be a real problem for this quest. Toy Time Galaxy is our next stop, and to get the first star, you'll have to make your way to the robot at the end, and along the way, there are going to be a couple of coins, but you can usually just use the gravity to your advantage to dodge them all. Once you get the infamous Spring Mario power-up, things will get a little more stressful, mainly because this power-up is complete total garbage. If you are timing your jump rights, you'll be okay though. The second star will be easily obtained, as there are no coins on those platforms where you have to go to collect the silver stars. And finally, you'll have to do more annoying Spring Mario platforming to get the third star, but once again, just be extra careful and this won't be a problem. Bowser Jr's Lava Reactor is up, and while this one has a couple of coins, none of them are in your way, and the same thing applies to the boss fight. There are a couple of coins on the platforms around you, but if you're just being smart about it, you won't have to worry. With this next grand star in hand, we can now explore the garden. Deep Dark Galaxy is going to be our first stop, and this first star will be easy to get. Basically, you just have to swim underwater up until you reach the secret ghost ship. You'd expect coins in your way, but there's none, so it's a very easy star. The second one starts with you fighting an underground gunner, and once that is done, you'll be able to fly to this planet, which just like a balloon, slowly loses air and gets smaller and smaller, revealing coins in the process, but you know, nothing to worry about. Once you obtain the ice flower, you'll have to jump on those water fountains to get up there, so make sure to avoid the first and fourth fountains, as they do feature a dirty coin on top of them. The rest of the level is fairly simple. Your biggest enemy for the final star ain't going to be that shark, nor the coins, no, it's going to be the horrible camera controls. Oh my gosh, this is terrible. Anyways, with another star in hand, we can now move on to the next level. Dreadnought Galaxy wants you to infiltrate the spaceship, and to do so, you'll have to eliminate some enemies, especially those Goombas wearing helmets. To defeat them, you'll have to jump on them, and when you defeat an enemy that way, it gives out a coin, so make sure that you are ready to spin jump out of there to avoid collecting it. The second star in here does have one tricky 2D section that contains a couple of coins, but if you're being smart about it, you'll be able to avoid all of those coins on the way and get your star. The third star does feature this pull star section where you'll find two coins, but you can just go around them. Defeat the top man boss and this galaxy will be done. Matter Splatter Galaxy is up and there are going to be a couple of coins on your way to the star but you can usually just go around them, so this won't be a problem. Melty Molten Galaxy is next, and this one contains a lot of fireballs and lava, and has this section that contains some very annoying coins. There's actually no way of getting up there using that path, but thankfully, you can just go around the corner and climb from over there to dodge them. Dodge the lava and collect the silver stars for an easy star. The second one we'll get in here does require you to use pull stars while dodging a couple of coins here and there, but this won't be a problem. While going up the sinking rock, you'll eventually reach this part where you're supposed to wall jump your way to safety, but with those coins being in your way, just use the hot burning lava to your advantage to reach the star at the top. Now this next star looks very promising, as you can see. Getting to this part is the easy thing, as there's only a few coins that stands on your way, but once you get there, here's the surprise, it's a rolling star, hooray for motion controls once more. This first part can be skipped by jumping on the floating platform, but then comes the rotating platforms. You'll have to avoid falling in the holes and avoid those coins at the same time, which is easier said than done. Go slowly around everything up until this final part and wait for the big lava rock to be right in front of you to make the jump 
And there we go. Thankfully, the final star we'll get in here will be super easy to obtain. The only coins that could be a problem being the one those enemies give out when they're defeated. But if you move out of the way, you'll reach the boss, defeat him and get your star. Sand Spiral Galaxy is next and this one is super easy. Grab the boo power up and avoid the few coins located on your way and you'll quickly reach the star at the end. Slingpod Galaxy was a little bit tricky, but not because of the coins, no, mainly because I can't seem to aim those things at all. <laughs> be careful during the pull star section and this star will be easily obtained. Drip Drop Galaxy wants us to use the green shell to defeat all of the eels, so a couple of 360 no scope shots will do the trick just fine and this star will be ours. Well, would you look at that, we now have 60 stars and the Comet Observatory has full power. Time to defeat Bowser once and for all. Bowser's Galaxy Reactor does contain a couple of coins that stands in your way, so you'll have to be extra careful. This final section is quite annoying though, as you're constantly being attacked by bullet bills and banzai bills, which restrict your movement options, and now you have the coins on your way, just plan your jumps and you'll make it. It's now time for the final battle, which just like the previous ones is quite easy. Just watch out for the healing coins that are located on all of the planets you'll fight on and there we go. Bowser is defeated and the final grand star is ours. Well, we did it! We have saved the princess, defeated Bowser and restored peace to the whole universe. So, is it possible to beat Super Mario Galaxy without touching a single coin? Well, yes! Yes it is and it's actually pretty easy. Let's be real, this game doesn't have a whole lot of coins, so it's super easy to just go around them and when a galaxy cannot be completed, we can just move on to the next one and keep on playing. And you might have noticed that during this quest, I barely did any prankster comets, as I wanted to explore as many galaxies as possible. And let me tell you, there are even more galaxies I didn't set foot on. I've played a lot of 2D Mario games these past weeks to try to beat them without touching a coin, but today we're moving into the third dimension and we're actually going in space. Super Mario Galaxy 2 is a fantastic game, I think everybody can agree on that. But is it possible to actually beat it without touching a single coin? The rules are simple, there's a coin counter in the bottom right corner of the screen and we want to keep this at zero. Well actually, the coin counter that really interests us is the global coin counter that appears when you are aboard Starship Mario. This is our total coins for the entire quest, so we're going to keep this one at zero if possible. Super Mario Galaxy 2 is level based, so most of the time you actually have to get at least one star in a galaxy in order to proceed to the next one, and there are some paths that require a certain amount of stars in order to proceed, so hopefully there won't be too many stars that we can't collect because of those pesky coins. Let's begin, shall we? So the intro stage actually contains a couple of coins during Bowser's attack on the city, but you can actually just go around them or just jump above them. Then Sky Station Galaxy is our first stop, and normally to get on top of this house over here, you're supposed to go inside that pipe to go to the other side of the planet and actually fall down in that hole, but no matter what I did, I always collected 3 coins inside the hole, it doesn't seem to matter how close to the walls you are because of the gravity shifting. Eh, a problem already in the first stage? Well, not really, because we can actually stay on this side of the planet and perform a triple jump followed by a wall jump and a spin jump to actually get on top and avoid the three deadly coins. After that, most of the coins in here are located in places that are super easy to avoid, so there we go, we have our first star. Yoshi Star Galaxy is up, and the first star in here is easy to get. There's a couple of coins on your path, but usually they're located in the middle of rocks or platforms, so you can just go around them. 
For the second star, there's actually a big problem. So you see, during this part, you have to use Yoshi's tongue to spit the spinies and free the Luma so that it transforms into a lounge star. But as you can see, there are those three coins around the lounge star, and when you're using it, you're forced to collect a single coin. Ugh. There's nothing you can do in here. You'll always collect at least one coin. So this star is a no-no. Let's exit the level and go back to Sky Station Galaxy to try to get the second star. There's a couple of spooky coins in this 2D section over here, but you can thankfully jump above the first one and glide along the wall to dodge the second one. There's going to be some coins on the blue tiles that you have to walk on to activate, but thankfully you can walk in the very corner of those tiles and dodge all of the coins. Let's feed this hungry Luma and go to Flip Swap Galaxy, which is super easy as it contains 3 coins on those blocks here, but they're super easy to dodge. Spin Dig Galaxy is up and this one is going to be a little bit annoying. For this first part, you need a spin drill and you're supposed to go on this platform with the coin in order to drill into the ground and come out the other side. Obviously, we're not gonna be doing that, but a triple jump and a spin jump will get you high enough to reach the Luma. At one point, you'll reach this part here, which requires you to use that lounge star on the block, and here's what happens once you use it. Uh oh, yeah, six deadly coins that we can't avoid. The thing is, you cannot skip spending galaxy, as you need to complete at least one star to move on to the next part. So yeah, we're actually forced to grab those six deadly coins. During the fight against Digaleg, I actually got a 7 coin by accident, so you know, I decided to purposely lose a life and start over from the checkpoint, but here's what happened. I got sent back to the checkpoint and had 0 coins. Wait, what? Yeah, here's an interesting tidbit for you. For some reason, Mario Galaxy 2 does save your star bits when you die and restart at a checkpoint, but it doesn't do the same for the coins counter. This is so weird. But you know what? My rule stated that we have to keep the lovely counter at zero, and this is what we're still doing here. Is this cheating? I don't know, you tell me. Anyways, with Digaleg dead, we have our 5th star and we have 0 coins on the global coin counter, despite those 6 gross coins we touched earlier. Spin Dig 2 is not very difficult, although you'll probably want to be careful and memorize where those annoying coins are located inside this planet to make sure not to dig into one by accident. For Fluffy Bluff Galaxy, you'll want to use Cloud Mario in order to create clouds to go around all of the bad coins. Right side down, Galaxy is up, and this one is actually impossible in this quest. Basically, it's a 2D segment, and you have to hold onto that flower to get to the next part, but there are those 3 coins in your way, and you can't jump high enough to avoid them. Thankfully, since we completed Fluffy Bluff Galaxy, we can go to the first Bowser Jr. And this one doesn't have any difficult parts, so it will be done in a breeze. With World 2 being unlocked, we can move on to new galaxies, starting off with the Puzzle Plane Galaxy, which is kind of easy and doesn't feature any dangerous coins. High Tail Falls Galaxy is next, and this one features lots of coins, and you have to eat a red pepper with Yoshi in order to proceed into the level. So yeah, lots of coins, and speedy Yoshis are not the best combination, but if you're being super careful, this will be done in no time. Balder Bowl Galaxy is up, and this one wants you to use Rock Mario's bowling ball to knock out the pins. Just be wary of the coins located in the middle of the bowling alley and dodge them to be okay. Wild Glide Galaxy is next, and this one's super dumb. There's literally only one coin in this level, and it's inside that bubble here. So I mean, just go around it. Let's make our way to Cosmic Cove Galaxy, where our first star will be real easy to get as we just have to swim with the Koopa Shell and dodge those coin bubbles. The second star will be quite the problem though, as it is a 2D section, and there's a lot of bad coins in it. We can dodge the first couple coins, up until this part here. I tried many ways, but it doesn't seem to be possible to actually climb up there without collecting any pesky coins. We're just gonna skip that one for now, okay? Honey Bloom is once again a 2D galaxy, and this one is very scary. Lots of coins everywhere, but thankfully, we have our buddy B Mario, 
And with the help of this bee mushroom, we can actually dodge all of the coins in our path to make our way to the very end. Whew, that was stressful. The second star in here is kind of difficult to get, as you can't be B Mario this time, and there are those two coins on the vine, but if you do a very precise wall jump, you can actually get to the star, and there we go. So, after getting this star, we got a challenge from the chimp, and he wants us to play his game, so you know, let's go back to Fluffy Bluff Galaxy and show him who's boss. The chimp's rules are simple. We have to get points by jumping on enemies and grabbing their coin. Uh, you serious, dude? You're making fun of me now? You think I'll grab coins? I don't need no coins to beat your challenge. Look, dude, I'll just bounce combos on those enemies to gather up as much points as I can, and then I'll grab this mushroom that is worth a thousand points, and this one up that is another thousand points, and there you go. It's as simple as that. <laughs> Now to be fair, this was way harder than it looks and it required a lot of tries. But yeah, it is indeed possible to get the 10,000 points the chimp wants without touching a coin. So that's kinda cool, I was proud of this one. With 16 stars in hand, we can now go to Bowser's Lava Lair and the only annoying coin is located on top of that spring over there. But if you just bounce from the sides, you'll be all good and the grand star will be yours. World 3 starts off with Tall Trunk Galaxy, and the first star is pretty easy to get, the only coins that could be problematic being in this 2D section. Hug the wall to the right to dodge those 3 coins, and just be careful for the others and you'll be all good. The second star is a fun one, let me tell you. You have to go down this big slide over here, and there's a ton of coins in here to show you where to go. To be honest, this star is a little bit difficult, but so much fun. And if you mess up, just lose a life and you get to start over, so you know, that's okay. Eventually, you'll reach the end and the star is yours. Cloudy Court Galaxy does feature a couple of coins here and there, but the only annoying ones are located in this 2D section near the end. Be careful, and this star will be done in no time. Our next up is Haunty Hall's Galaxy, and the first star is pretty easy, so no worries. Just watch where you and Yoshi are going, and this is it. Houndy Howls 2 does contain a couple of coins on this moving path that gets eaten by those creatures, but nothing that will stop us from getting another star. Next up is Freezy Flake Galaxy, and it is pretty easy up until this part with the slide. Just make sure you slide around the coins before they touch you and you'll be all good. You can get an easy second star right away by going inside that pipe and playing the chimps mini game. No coins to collect this time, so we're good. Finally. The third star in here does contain one tricky part and it's this one over here because you are inside a blizzard storm and can barely see what's in front of you. This area does contain a couple of coins so just tiptoe and go super slow to make sure not to get tricked and you'll be all good. Next up is the Rolling Masterpiece Galaxy, and if you watch my top 10 worst galaxies with my boy Tetrabit Gaming, you know I don't particularly enjoy this galaxy very much. Well, in this quest, there's only one part that contains an annoying coin, and it's over here. Basically, you must roll on the little fence over there to dodge the three coins, and besides that, nothing is really difficult. So now we are two stars short to proceed to the next level, so we're actually going to have to rely on Prankster Comets to get them. Thankfully, we collected a couple of Comet medals throughout the quest, so we can go to Balder Bowl Galaxy to get another star. This one asks us to use Rock Mario to defeat all those enemies in under 55 seconds. This is super easy, and the only thing that can give out a coin in here is the spiky plants located there, so just make sure not to roll on it and you'll be okay. With a thousand star bits, we can unlock the Beat Block Galaxy, and this one is an easy star containing a grand total of one coin, and it's located over there, so it's super easy to dodge. Now that we have 28 stars in hand, we unlock Bowser Jr's Fearsome Fleet, and this one contains a fair amount of coins, but nothing that our boy Mario cannot dodge. By defeating Mega Hammer, we get another grand star and can move on to World 4. Supermassive Galaxy is our first stop and oh, oh that's a big coin, that's a giant coin. Mamma mia! But thankfully, this coin is just a wall to jump off of, so you won't collect any coin, we're good. 
This planet here requires you to use the spin drill to defeat those three Koopa Troopas, but they sadly give out deadly coins when defeated, and you're usually not able to move out of the way in time to dodge it. After many tries, I have found a way to beat them though. You'll have to make sure to hit the Koopa's head as the coin comes from their body. This requires precision timing, but it is possible after a couple of tries. What is left of the stage now is kind of easy, so another star is ours. Flipsville Galaxy is up, and this one wants you to ground pound on those platforms to flip them around to visit new parts of the galaxy. But the thing is, this moving platform here forces you to collect a couple of coins. I couldn't find a way to flip the platform and dodge all of the coins, sadly. But you know me, I'm not giving up that easily. Turns out you can actually skip this entire section by jumping on top of this wall over here, and there we go. We skip this annoying set of coins and we're good to go. For the second star in here, you're supposed to use the spin drill to get those silver stars, but there's one over here that cannot be collected as it is surrounded by those evil coins. Yeah, this one's impossible to get. Honey Hop Galaxy is up, and this one requires you to climb up a wall full of honeycombs, and there's a couple of coins located here and there, but as B Mario, you can just fly around them, and you'll reach the top and get the star in no time. Let's go to Starshine Beach Galaxy for a little vacation, shall we? So the first star you can get in here is super easy to get, as there's basically no coins in your way. Just a heads up though, there are some coins hidden in those red flowers near the star, so make sure to jump to get it or else this happens. Ugh. The second star features those Chucksters from Super Mario Sunshine, and you'd think they would be nice and helpful? but they can throw you right into a bunch of coins, which isn't very nice. Why did you do that to me, you meanie? There you go, I hope you suffer, boy. Chumpworks Galaxy is next, and the first star in here is quite easy to get. Basically, you'll need to stand on those platforms in order to push them down, but make sure not to touch the coin and you'll be golden. This next part does require you to flip the platform, and some of them will contain deadly coins on one side, so be on the lookout for that. But besides that, this star will be yours in no time. This second one on the other hand will prove to be quite the challenge. First off, you have to play as Spring Mario. And if you played Super Mario Galaxy, you know that this power up is complete garbage and controls like poop. The thing is, you're forced to use it to get the star and dodge all of the coins. The problem lies here in this 2D section. You see, you're supposed to climb up, but there's a couple of evil coins in your way. First off, there is no way to dodge those two coins when in the 2D section. You can't go around them as the game forces you to play it like it's a side-scroller Mario game. I tried going from the left, I tried going from the right, and I always end up collecting a coin. So yeah. But eventually, I managed to actually dodge them by jumping from the side before the game switches to the 2D perspective. You see, you have a little bit of time before the game forces you to play it sideways where you can still move in a 3D space, so it gives you just enough time to dodge those first two coins. Now you think that everything is good and the star is yours, but no, there are more coins up there. You know, on those platforms, the ones that rotate around and send you flying everywhere, yay. Now, I can't even explain how many times I had to retry this part here. It actually took me hours, but eventually I actually managed to skip all of the coins and grab the star without touching them. Whew, this was so difficult, probably one of the hardest thing I had to do in this entire coinless series. Now once again, we are missing a couple of stars to proceed to the next stage, so let's try getting more prankster comets, shall we? Balder Bowl Galaxy is next, and this secret star features this robot that wants a friend Goomba. So let's just bring one to it, and there we go, easy star. The second star in Wild Glide Galaxy is also super easy, and it's basically the same thing we did earlier. Next up is the Sweet Mystery Galaxy, and this one does feature a lot of candy bars and cookies, but most of the coins are super easy to avoid, so this is another easy star. Sky Station is our next up, and this speedrun star is super easy to get, and we just have to use the same strategy we used to get the first star, and there we go, 40 stars. Bowser's Gravity Gauntlet is up, and it does feature a couple of scary 2D segments with coins, but thankfully, you can actually dodge all of the pesky coins by being extra careful and using gravity to help you dodging some of them. 
With Bowser out of the picture, World 5 is up, and we have tons of new galaxies to explore. Space Storm Galaxy starts off strong with a 2D section and some evil coins, but I found out that you can actually dodge those coins by going to the edge of the platform while crouching, and then when Mario grabs the ledge, just let go and then push the control stick in the opposite direction instantly, and you'll be able to dodge all those three evil coins. The pull star near the end does require a little bit of fiddling around in order to dodge the coins, but nothing that will stop us in this quest. For the second star, you have to climb on top of this tower, and the game gives you those switches you can use to make everything go slow and help you on your quest. But the thing is, using those slow motion switches actually makes some evil coins appear on your way, so you know, we're not gonna use them. Upside Dizzy Galaxy is our next stop, and this one is in 2D and does contain coins. And guess what? Once again, a 2D section is our worst enemy, making us collect coins no matter what we do. So yeah, this one's impossible. Boo Moon Galaxy is next, and the first star is super easy to get, as there's no real evil coins on the way. The second star does require you to use Boo Mario in a 2D section, and as Boo Mario is super bouncy, you'd want to take damage in here and lose the suit to go under that coin. For the third star, you'll have to stay on those snake blocks platform and there won't be any coins in your way, so easy star. Slip Sand Galaxy is next, and this one features this section here where you go down a sand slide while dodging those big enemies that want to squish you. Once they're gone, the path slowly becomes smaller and smaller, and oh, it contains coins? And you can't dodge them? Come on. Yeah, this one's impossible too. So, Shiverburn Galaxy is up, and this one contains a lot of lava and a lot of ice, but thankfully not a lot of coins, so the first star will be yours in no time. The same thing can be said about the second star, which is just another easy chimp game. Fleet Glide Galaxy is next, and this one is another galaxy featuring Fluzzard the Bird, so you know, it's super easy. Now we need more stars to go to Bowser Jr, so let's check out more Prankster Comets. The Shiverburn Galaxy Prankster Comet is also very easy and requires you to skate as Rainbow Mario to defeat those enemies, and that's an easy star. Space Storm Galaxy has a star where you need to bring a red top man to the robot, and once again, no coins are in your way. Then, for Cloudy Court's Prankster Comet, you'll need to run away from cosmic clones while dodging some coins, but none of them are a problem. Bowser Jr.'s Fearsome Fleet has a Prankster Comet where we have to defeat Mega Hammer without taking damage. So, you know, there's no coins in here, so it's easy. Howney Hall's Prankster Comet features cosmic clones running at you while you run on this path, but nothing that would be too difficult. Finally, Chumpworks Galaxy has a Prankster Comet where you have to run away from more clones while pushing down the switches, but the coin is in the middle of the switches, so you can just push them down there, it's an easy star. With 55 stars in hand, let's visit Bowser Jr's Boom Bunker. This one starts off slow, with you having to dodge those three coins while bringing a bullet bill to explode the box, but the real problem comes from this part over here. You see, you have to use Cloud Mario to get to these three platforms and break them with a ground pound in order to make the lounge star appear. But there's a coin on top of the ground pound platforms. One deadly coin. One unavoidable coin. Ugh. You cannot ground pound without touching this bad coin. And even if we manage to do it, you'd be forced to catch the coin when using the lounge star. But hey, we can use the checkpoint hack we had to use earlier, right? We can still keep that lovely counter to zero? <sighs> Wrong. There is no checkpoint anymore. You are sent straight to the bus. Ugh. I tried to reach the bus using the cannon over here, but you can't. I tried using Cloud Mario to try to, you know, glitch the gravity and get there, but I couldn't do it. Sadly, this is a coin that we are forced to collect, and we are forced to add to our global coin counter. This is so sad. But hey, let's still go to World 6, and let's hope not to touch another coin, okay guys? Cheer up, it's gonna be good! It's time for Melty Monster Galaxy, and the first star doesn't feature too many coins. There are those pull stars that you have to use, and there are coins around them, so be extra careful. On that swing, you'll have to make sure not to swing all the way to the right to dodge that coin, but that's it really. Go inside that pipe to meet our buddy the chimp, and his bowling minigame doesn't contain any coins, so that's another easy star. 
the last star in here wants you to go to the end of a path as Rock Mario and there's a lot of bouncing walls and pits you can fall into. There are only two coins to dodge in here, but let me tell you that it is super scary and you don't have a lot of time to react, but if you align yourself correctly, you can dodge both of them. Clockwork Runes is up and it is super easy to get a star in here. Basically, most of the coins are inside those spinning things, but just be extra careful and you won't have any problems. Welcome to Throwback Galaxy, which is a remake of Wump's Fortress from Super Mario 64. And just like when we played that stage in our run without touching a coin, you can avoid most of them and it's even easier in Mario Galaxy 2 because of the extra height you get from the spin jump. Both stars in here will be obtained in no time. It is time for Flash Black Galaxy, and this one does feature a couple of coins in this 2D section, but if you time your jump with the flashes that allow you to see the platforms and the walls, you'll collect the star easily. Slimy Spring is up, and at first I was afraid of those speed rings located underwater, but you can actually bunk your head on the wall for it to open, and then you dodge the coin rings altogether, so yeah, that's cool. We are still missing 6 stars to get to the final level, so let's explore and do some Prankster Comets. Bowser's Gravity Gauntlet is up, and the Prankster Comet here is a speedrun, so just do the same strategy we used earlier, and the star is yours. Beat Block has this Prankster Comet where we have to do the level, but the blocks switch appear and disappear twice as fast. It is still pretty easy though. For Puzzle Plank Galaxy, the Prankster Comet wants you to collect those purple coins, and at first I was afraid these challenges were not for us, but hey look, there is a dedicated purple coin counter, so collecting those doesn't increase our total yellow coin count, so we are good. Hytale Galaxy has a Prankster Comet where you must run super fast with Yoshi, and there's a lot of broken platforms this time. It makes this star a little bit more difficult than it was earlier, but it is still possible without a coin. We now have access to the Battle Belt Galaxy, and this one requires you to defeat tons of enemies, and they usually drop coins when defeated, but you can just wait for the coins to disappear and you'll be all good. The final star we're going to get is located in the Sweet Mystery Galaxy, and this one is a purple coin challenge, so you know, just like the previous one we did, those coins do not count on our total coin counter, so we are okay. With 70 stars, we can now visit Bowser's Galaxy Generator and defeat him once and for all. The level in itself does contain a couple of coins, but they're always located on a platform where you can walk around them or, you know, just jump above them. Even the 2D section over here is quite easy, so yeah, Bowser was a nice guy for us in here. It doesn't matter though, as we will defeat him and there we go. Bowser is gone, the galaxy is saved, and we are finally reunited with Princess Peach. Is it possible to beat Super Mario Galaxy 2 without touching a single coin? Sadly, it isn't, as we are forced to collect this coin in Bowser Jr. stage, and technically we also collected 6 coins in the Spending Galaxy, even though we technically got rid of them because the game is kinda broken. So yeah, depending on your opinion, you either need 7 coins or 1 coin to finish the game. Not perfect, but not that bad. For many years, coins were pretty much useless in Mario games, as they only gave you secret bonus stars or 1-ups when you collected a hundred of those. Super Mario Odyssey decided to allow you to use those yellow yucky things to buy new costumes and secret power moons, which makes me even happier to attempt to beat this game without touching a single one, because it will actually make the game more difficult. The rules are simple. We are going to try to beat Super Mario Odyssey without actually touching a single coin. This also includes the purple coins that are scattered all over the world. You see those two lovely coin counters on the top left over there? Well, we need to keep them both at zero, or else we fail. Touching a purple coin automatically saves your game and ruins your day, so I suggest always having two saves so you have a backup. And it actually saved my life a couple of times during my playthrough. Now that everything has been set, let's just jump into it. And our story begins with us getting punched and completely wrecked by Bowser. He's not playing games this time. 
after getting smashed away to the Bone Ton Kingdom, we get to meet the lovely Cappy, who will be of great use for this quest. But he might also be a problem, because throwing out our hat can sometimes lead to collecting dirty coins. Speaking of, this kingdom doesn't have that many coins in your path, but just make sure not to follow this evil tutorial down there, as you might touch some coins if you do. Pfft. I can't believe Nintendo is actually trolling me in a challenge! That is so uncool! After making our way to the other side of that bridge, we come across the first cave where we turn into a cute frog. All of those golden rings are full of evil coins, so we are going to have to make our way up this cave by dodging them all, which isn't particularly difficult, thankfully. On top of the tower, we'll get to fight Topper, one of the evil brutals that Bowser hired to defeat us. Watch out after jumping on his head as a ring of evil coins will appear. Wait for those to vanish and jump one more time on his head to defeat this boss. Next up is the Cascade Kingdom, and this is where you'll learn that there are evil coins pretty much everywhere. Walking in tall grass, touching a rock, defeating an enemy, those are all things that we take for granted while playing the game, but for a run without a coin, well, we cannot do these things anymore. Thankfully, breaking this rock with the Chain Chomp doesn't give us any coins, so we can get our first Power Moon. Can't say the same thing about this rock over there, which gives us one coin. Ugh, this is gonna be a fun challenge, guys, I promise. Make sure not to touch this coin as you aim the Chain Chomp on this wall, and you get to climb up this 2D section. Oh, spoiler alert, some of those brick blocks contain evil coins, so watch out for that as well. On top of this kingdom awaits Madame Broom, a very easy boss. Basically, every time you hit her with the Chain Chomp, a bunch of coins appear, but they're so far away from you that it's easy not to touch them. I was still missing one Power Moon after the fight though, but there's one more over there just waiting to be picked up. So with those four moons in hand, we can make our way to the next kingdom. The Sand Kingdom awaits, and not collecting a single coin takes away the opportunity to play this fun mini game, which is a bummer. Oh, and if you are thinking about defeating enemies with Cappy to avoid collecting coins, that is also out of the question. Guess it is also going to be a pacifist run. Any Undertale fans in the room? No? Okay. As we make our way to the top of this world, there are going to be a couple of coins on our path, but they're usually not that difficult to dodge. And using triple jumps and cappy, we can often just make our way up ledges and across gaps, which is pretty useful. We'll soon reach a problematic part though, because to go up this big tower, you need to go through this 2D section, which isn't a problem at first, up until you reach the very top. Uh oh, how can I go up those platforms without touching a coin? Well, simply put, you can't. We cannot reach the objective on top of this tower. Is this the end of the quest? Well, no, because in Super Mario Odyssey, you don't actually have to beat those objectives at all. You can simply collect the required amount of moons to move on to the next kingdom. And thankfully for us, the Sand Kingdom is filled with moons to collect. Some are well hidden, others are in plain sight, but if you're being careful, you can usually collect them without having coins in your way. Some power moons are obviously more difficult to collect, like this one down this cave, because you need Cappy to move up, but Cappy can also collect those golden circles of coins. Ugh. Going across this big gap seems impossible at first, but just do a very epic long jump and you'll get to grab even more power moons. To be frank, this kingdom is so vast and huge that it's actually super easy to get all of the moons required to move on, and this is exactly what we're going to do. Welcome to the Lake Kingdom, a tiny world that only requires us to get 8 moons, and collecting those will be quite easy. There aren't a lot of coins on your path in here, and swimming is made way easier if you just capture a cheap cheap. Watch out if you decide to get the moon shards, because to get this one, you'll need to break the top left box only, as the other boxes contain evil coins. I decided to fight the Brutals to get my final power moons, and just like the first time, they explode into coins after taking damage, so make sure to dive away from them as fast as you can. And with that dude out of here, we have enough moons to make our way to the next world. 
The Wooden Kingdom is up, and this one is going to feature a couple of annoyances for this quest. First off, it's full of tall grass and bushes, and walking over those automatically gives you a coin, so you'll have to be wary of that. Before you enter the actual kingdom, make sure to grab this moon by catching the bunny, as it's a freebie. Defeating this big piranha plant automatically gives out 6 evil coins, so make sure to stay away from those if you want to be safe. As we make our way to and up the Sky Garden Tower, there's going to be a couple moons to collect, and there ain't a lot of coins on the way, so no worries. Oh hey, it's another brutal fight, and guess what? They explode into coins after you hit them. As usual, dive away from those coins after a hit, and you'll soon win another multi-moon. As you now make your way up the kingdom, you'll get to meet the most annoying enemy for this quest, the Sherm or as I like to call it, the annoying tank I really dislike, okay? See, here's the problem with Sherm. They try to shoot you, and sometimes they shoot rocks, boxes, or they even shoot each other. And if a Sherm kills another Sherm, who gets the dirty coin of death? You do, for some reason that I still can't explain. Like I'm all the way up there, and they shoot each other over there, why do I get the coin? Making your way up this wall is super annoying, because you need to make sure that the Sherm won't shoot each other as you make your way up there. This is actually easier said than done, but after a couple of tries, I managed to do it. The flower boss is super easy to defeat and doesn't feature a single coin, so with that bad boy out of the way, we finally have enough moons to make it to the next world. As we make our way to the Metro Kingdom, we get attacked by the big bad evil Bowser, and this leads us to a fight against this mad lad in the Cloud Kingdom. Thankfully, there are a grand total of zero coins in this world, so you know, just beat Bowser like you normally would and you're gonna be good. Sadly for us, even though we clearly won during the gameplay, well the cutscene actually features us getting our butt kicked once again and we fall to our demise. The Lost Kingdom. This world starts off with us losing our boy Cappy, but getting him back is actually super easy. Just precisely ground pound this platform without touching the deadly coin and make your way to this big bad bird and voila, we got Cappy back. Whew. Thankfully, once we get him back, we'll realize that this kingdom isn't too difficult to complete. Sure, there are annoying coins here and there, but there's always more than enough room to dodge them and collect power moons. Not gonna lie, I was pretty proud of this epic jump to get to Captain Toad and had to show you guys just to brag about my Mario skills. I mean, that's so cool! I eventually managed to get all of the power moons required to repair the Odyssey, and on that note, we can finally get to the Metro Kingdom. Hmm, this kingdom actually looked more fun in the trailer, now it's all dark and gloomy. Turns out that our pal Bowser decided to attack the city prior to us arriving, and now it is up to us again to save the world. Ah, <sighs> what a day! Avoid those evil coins and make your way to the actual city, and you'll soon realize that this kingdom is going to be a pain in the butt. Why? Well, it contains Sherms, again. Uh-oh. As you can see, Sherms tend to find all sorts of ways to give out coins, even with you not even moving or anything. Wow, that was kinda cheap game. Seriously though, the Sherm are actually rage-inducing during that segment, because you have to watch for them at all times. They keep shooting each other, shooting boxes, shooting enemies, and you always get the coin of shame. I mean, look at this here, I'm just minding my own business on this building, and boom, I get a coin. That's super cheap. My tip to beat this section over there was to capture the Sherm and leave them be, because after you capture them and leave, they get stunned for a moment and at least they're not shooting other enemies while in that state. This part with the 6 Sherms was actually really annoying, as they kept shooting each other, but if you simply run to the right side and roll as fast as you can, they'll eventually be out of the camera view, and when that happens, they don't seem to shoot anything anymore, so you're good to go. Making our way up those stairs is quite annoying and requires a super scary cappy jump, but it is possible. 
But if you thought this was the hard part, well, wait until we enter that building over there. Welcome to the new Dunk City Interior Hall, or as I like to call it, Hell. Seriously, my dudes, this is the hardest part of the entire game. Everything here is out to give you coins. There are tons of blocks, lots of invisible coins, those micro Goombas enemies that you cannot touch, jump on or hit with Cappy or else they give you coins. Oh, and it's full of those Bowser posters and they also give out a coin if you touch them using Cappy. There's also lots of regional purple coins on your path, as well as pits you can fall into. Like, seriously, this one single tower took me a good hour to beat. And once I got just a little bit further in the stage, I still had lots of very scary jumps to do, especially this one over there. Thankfully, I got a power moon in that chest, so that's pretty cool. After a million tries, I made my way to this part, and I just decided to YOLO run out of here. And it worked! Yay! Time for the boss. And this boss has to be defeated by capturing a Sherm. There ain't no coins in there, so it's gonna be an easy fight, right? Wait, what? I got a coin? Wait, 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 replay the footage. Where? How? I don't... Uh, I don't get it! What? Well, here's the explanation. After you shoot down the bus, if an enemy is on the screen, it gets destroyed. And what happens when an enemy dies? You get a coin. Look how far this Sherm is from me, and I still get a coin. <sighs> Thankfully, I managed to find a big brain way to defeat the bus without getting that deadly coin. Just capture the first Sherm, and then immediately get out and capture the second one. As you can see, the first Sherm is stunned and confused, and eventually it will just vanish and disappear. This is when you can finally shoot the bus down and avoid getting a coin. Yay! After that one gimmick is done, the rest of this fight is pretty straightforward and we can finally save the kingdom and bring back daytime. Thankfully, the Metro Kingdom is way easier during the daytime and getting all of the moons required to leave is super simple. You'll be doing many activities, such as jump roping, playing with a remote control car, gathering musicians for Mayor Pauline, sitting on benches and talking with lonely dudes, exploring sewers, climbing towers, doing scary pole jumps, and there's even this part where it's... Yeah, no, no, don't do that. You're not practicing social distancing, Mario. That, that's not cool. And once more, Captain Toad is going to give us our final moon, and on that note, the Metro Kingdom is finally complete. It was literally the most difficult part of this challenge so far, but we did it. Time to leave this beautiful city and go to the Snow Kingdom, which is gonna be a pretty cold one. The Snow Kingdom starts with us dodging coins during a snowstorm, but it's pretty easy to do. Enter Shiveria by jumping in this pit and you'll be able to get a moon on this pile of boxes over there. To gather more moons, you'll need to beat the four trials of this town, and for the most part, those rooms are pretty easy to complete without touching a single coin. Sure, there's going to be coins and golden rings on your way, but there's always a way to just move around those and grab the power moons. And that goes for all of the challenges, even those that look way scarier. Trust me, they are not if you're just being careful. We'll also have to fight a brutal boy again, and the fight is exactly the same as the previous one, so you know the drill. Grab the final moon inside of this chest, and on that note, we can leave this kingdom without even saving it from the evil snowstorm. Oh well. Seaside Kingdom is up, and it feels good not to be freezing anymore. 10 power moons are required to leave this kingdom, and those won't be too difficult to get. Basically, you can gather lots of those by just making your way across the map and discovering the checkpoint flags. I gotta admit that avoiding those spiky boulders while dodging the coins was a little bit scary, but it is possible. The funny thing about this kingdom is that you're normally supposed to attack this Mollusk Lanceur and defeat him eventually, but for this quest, we don't even need to fight him as there's more than enough power moons in the kingdom for us to just leave him be. Goodbye, Mollusk Lancer. Don't cause any trouble, okay, my dude? 
Next up is the Luncheon Kingdom, and this one does contain a couple of coins to dodge, but there's usually enough space to dodge them and gather the power moons. There are lots of moons to grab in this kingdom, so be ready to spend a little while here. There's also going to be a brutal fight, but these are not even a challenge anymore. To make our way across this lava lake, we have to activate a switch, and to do so, we need to capture a hammer bro and break these cheese blocks. Sadly, some of those delicious looking cheese blocks contain evil coins, so my tip here is to grab a hammer bro and quickly make your way behind the cheese there. Break only those two blocks and you'll be able to activate the lever and get the moon. Grabbing the multi-moon in the stew is fairly easy and with that done, you'll unlock the rest of the world. There's gonna be more moons to get and more coins to dodge, but it's usually not that difficult. Oh, and if you're thinking about fighting the chef bird in the stew, well, just don't. All of those ingredients you see contain a dirty coin, and it doesn't matter if you touch them or if the boss breaks them, you still get the coins. It is impossible. But thankfully, this world contains more than enough moons so that you don't even need to beat the boss. With all of those power moons in hand, we can leave this tasty looking world and head over to the Bowser Kingdom. Uh oh, here comes Bao Bao, and he's riding a giant dragon! And we're dead again! <laughs> Yay! The Rune Kingdom is just a boss fight, so you can easily beat this one without ever getting a single coin. Yay! Alright, now that this is done, we go to Bowser's Kingdom for real this time! This world starts off easy and doesn't have that many coins in your path. In fact, getting the first power moon is super simple. This world only gets a little bit more difficult once you reach this part here where there are bombs, boxes and those Pokeo bird enemies. You probably know where I'm going with that. Some of those boxes contain coins, and if you break them with the bombs, well, you get that dirty coin. And if a Pokeo explodes because of a bomb, well, you also get the dirty coin. <sighs> now, maybe you were not aware of that, but you don't actually need the bomb to break the boxes. You can actually use Pokeo's spike attack to break the box. Sure, it takes a million hits, but this is way better to do than to get a dirty coin because of the explosion of the bomb, am I right? Defeat the two Brutals to open up the door and make your way up this moving wall while dodging the coins and you'll get to the epic boss fight against this big robot. You need to use Pokio's beak attack to break the metal from the robot legs and then climb up and do a ground pound attack on the Brutals. While this is not that difficult to do, once you attack the boss, you are given a coin if there's a Pokio on the floor. Oh yay, this great mechanic from the Metro Kingdom made a comeback. It took me a long time to complete this boss, but my best strategy was to just leave the Pokio on the floor and wait for it to despawn before ground pounding the Brutals. Doing that prevents you from getting evil coins. And if you want to go the extra mile and be a super gamer, try to climb back on the robot straight away after attacking it. It is super difficult, but it's actually the best way to avoid collecting coins by accident. After I finally killed this boss, I was lacking a couple of power moons, but they're pretty easy to collect without touching a single coin, so it is now time to go on the moon, the last stop of the day. So, to beat the moon kingdom, you're normally meant to make your way across this path and enter this big cave that is full of lava, dry bones, enemies, and most importantly, evil sherm tanks that give out evil coins without you even realizing it. But, you know, I just didn't have the patience to deal with them anymore. So I just made my way around this path and did this bada beam, bada boom, bada wow, epic gamer jump. And there we go. We actually skipped the cave. Thank you so much, speedrunners, for that amazing strat. Big love. Ew, a pile of coin. That's dirty. All right, time to enter the church and crash that wedding. The fight against Bowser is exactly like the Cloud Kingdom one, meaning there is not a single coin on your way. Punch Bowser enough times and we did it! We saved the princess and all of this without touching it. Oh, oh wait, oh, oh. Well, it is time to become Bowser and finish the game once and for all. During this final escape section, you'll be pleased to know that there is not a single coin on your way. 
so just avoid the falling boulders from the sky and you'll soon break this block and there we go. We did it for real, we completed Super Mario Odyssey and we got friend zoned by Princess Peach in the process. Epic! So is it actually possible to beat Super Mario Odyssey without touching a single coin? Yes, it is! To be honest, besides the annoying Metro Kingdom part and the Tower of Death, this wasn't the most difficult challenge I've attempted. If you're looking for a fun one next time you play Mario Odyssey, I suggest you try this challenge.